feel like we need more edge. You don't think that intro is edgy enough? <laughs> no. No, it's not. It's getting there, though. Yeah, it's getting, we'll we gotta get, get Sinjay to, like, make an even edgier one. Alright, we'll have, like, some nuclear weapons and shit, you know? We'll have some We'll have weapons. it be, like, fucking 90s new metal edge. Oh, God. No, be. dude, that's way too much. <laughs> the reason why that stayed in the fucking 90s. Oh, my God. We'll bring it back. So someday. we're joined by, uh, Sarah. Hi. So how you doing? Good. Kind of. All right, well. Basically, this is all I got going on today, so. All right, well. <laughs> I promise we'll be a good, good use of your time. Good luck with that. For sure, for sure, yeah. All right. So, uh, before we went live, I was just kind of like, you know, because I, I checked out your Twitter and I saw you went live. So I was just kind of like, oh, you know, is this like her streaming the, the other end of our show? I tuned in for like a few minutes. And I heard a few things that I just like. I I think we should uh, correct. Okay, go ahead. Because because you, cause you're spreading uh, fake news. Whoa. Okay. okay. You know? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, you know, what, what do you think? You're gonna like appear on our fucking Uber alt right podcast and get away with fake news? <laughs> oh yeah, right. totally. Yeah. How about let's correct so, the uh, record then? Okay, so I have a few quotes. These are uh, not all verbatim, mind you, but still. Um, one thing you said is like they they probably sit there and complain about feminists. I don't I don't recall a single instance of us playing like a feminist video. Maybe we did at some point, but we've done like sixty episodes by now, and I can yet like recall a single instance of that. So lies, you lied. All right. Well, and you say uh, we riff on SJWs. We don't do that a whole lot. We uh, mostly just riff on. Like just crazy fucking politicians on the far right. Yeah, you know? generally, yeah. And, uh, yeah, talking heads and shit like that. <laughs> Very yeah. occasionally I will, but only if they're really dumb. Yeah, but I have yet to do that, so I resent that accusation. <laughs> I mean, okay. I only saw that one episode, and uh, based off of the clips that I had and the sections I've seen, that's the impression I got, so... It kind of gets into the thing we're going to talk about, so I guess it's apropos, but... Um, you said. Oh, you also said like if they have political views, they're either centrists or center left. I'm like center left libertarian, so you are correct there. I have to give you a point point for that. Same here. Yes. And then the uh, final statement, I'm which is is, is kind of odd because like you're you're appear on uh, you're making an appearance on like our show, so it's like they're just kids. So yes. Why fucking drop in if we're just a bunch of fucking children? <laughs> because I think that it's. Well, you said a bunch of incorrect things, and so I'd like to correct them. <laughs> well, who cares if, like, we're just a bunch of fucking bratty kids? I mean, like, who gives a fuck? Um, I mean, no, whenever, like, I, was, we're all in whenever our 20s I was younger and, and uh, more immature, I had dumb takes, and, like, people correcting me on that, you know, made me grow as a person, so fuck it. Sure, I, I just find it odd. But then again, it's, it's obviously just, like, hyperbole, so what the fuck ever. Um, but there you go, those are, like... The, that's all I tuned in for. After that, I was just kind of like, all right, I got to get the show set up. So I don't know if you said anything else. If you did, let me know. But if not, we'll just get into it. No, that's fine. Uh, I had no idea exactly where we were going to talk, like uh, where this was going to go into. So if you want to like introduce the topic. The topic is you versus us, I fucking guess. <laughs> no, well, no, I mean, well, this all kind of started from that Stephen King tweet. That's why we're here, right? Yes. So do you want to uh, provide some context for uh, our listeners? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. But let me just uh, pull that tweet up. Uh, by the way, I noticed uh, fucking Discord froze the screen share again just as we went live, so... Beautiful. You guys are getting, like, the, the listener version of this. So, yeah, basically what the edited version. You guys are getting the edited version early. Yeah. Let's mm. see. Did he delete it? I think he might have deleted it because I do recall that he um. He, There's got to be a screenshot Ooh, of it on fuck fucking Stephen Google King. Images. Just just look it dude, up, dude. What a pussy, dude. Well, like I mean, here's the thing. Like I I understand if he wants to uh, you know come to the conclusion like what I said w was wrong, but like delete if, if he did delete it, and I'm not seeing it here. If he did delete it, then all that does is make it seem like he's trying to cover up the fact that he ever had that opinion yeah. to begin with. And I think, I think people, no matter where you stand on the whole Stephen King tweet thing, I, I think that you can agree that that's not a good thing that he deleted it. Like, if you're going to address that you said something wrong, then you need to own up to it and then be like, okay, I said something wrong, it, it exists, and now I'm going to say that I was wrong about it. But that's just my opinion. I think it's absolutely fucking ridiculous that he deleted it. But, yeah, let me... God damn, man. This guy tweets a lot for a fucking boomer. 
I think I found it. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is the one, but it has like 61k likes, and so I think that might be it. All right. Um, yep. so he said, I would never consider diversity in matters of art, only quality. Uh, it seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. So, uh, Sarah, w w what's your interpretation of that? Because I know that obviously you and I have a different take on that. So, whenever I see takes like that, it's usually from people who otherwise don't consider the fact. So, Stephen King is an old white boomer who's yes. probably never grown up with any kind of like lack of, say, expressions of his own culture or anyone who looks like him in the media. And so, he probably has never really thought about that in his whole life. Um, he's never felt like anything didn't express his points of view or like his lifestyle or his culture or anything like that to a point where there was like like he thirsted for that in media and so to say that like we shouldn't consider diversity is just it, it's a little tone deaf to the people who actually do care about that uh, okay. okay well I, 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 you don't know that though I mean like you're just making that assumption about him based on his age and, and gender and fucking you know skin tone well, not necessarily, because, like, we understand how media affects people and how, um, basically, how media affects people of different genders, of different races, of different sexes, of everything. Like, it, it does have an effect on the way we consume it, the way we create it, the opinions we have of other people, the opinions we have on media itself. It's, like, way more complex. Sure, but I'm just saying, like, you know, you assuming... You know, th that being the cause where it stands. I mean, like, how do you possibly know that? Well, I don't know. I'm assuming based off of the fact that it's not a concern for him. And why is it not a concern for him? Well, can, can I just I say know. something it's, it's, for a second? Sure, sure. If, if, I, if you don't mind. Yeah. My, my thing is, okay, how do you know Stephen King is even qualified to write uh, from the perspective? Of, like, like you're, are you asking him to, like, put himself in the mindset of like a black female lesbian character that he knows nothing about and and write from that perspective i mean i i agree there should be more diversity in media but you know if you want people to create good art they they should be writing what they know about so why would you force uh force an, an artist to Wait, like where did i say you know, i'm forcing anybody to write anything about a particular person or a group of people well, I'm not saying that you're forcing them. I'm saying like the the idea that his perspective is wrong because he's because like, I'm saying how do you know he's just not able to write stuff like that? You're saying it's 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 problematic that he's saying. I'm not talking about that... his work specifically. Whenever we talk, we talk about diversity. It's about media as a whole, and this I believe his tweet was in response to the fact. Um, what was it? The Golden Globes, where. There's been a huge issue of uh, the fact that it, it's mainly white actors and white led films and white directors that end up getting awards rather than like we don't see a lot of that going to people of color or films made by or for people of color. Well, I'll agree there, um, but no one really takes the Golden Globes seriously anyway. I mean, they like, objectively do, though. <laughs> Like, there are people who take it seriously, yeah. There are some people that take it seriously, but they're mostly a bunch of Academy thought sniffers, and everyone knows that. Like, no one takes... Like, most people have uh, opinions that are, like... Like, most people look at the Golden Globes and are like, are you fucking serious? Like, e even you, you're saying, like, all these, like, you know, black artists have been snubbed. And I, I agree, too. I'm not even saying that, that that's false. I absolutely agree. But that's... That I, I I that's that's a problem with the Golden Globes. Yeah, but it's, it's very, not. It's very corrupted, honestly. It's it's not it just is. things like the Golden Globes. Like for example, I mean, any kind of award is going to give something a legitimacy, and it's going to give it more of a reach. Like how many people would probably know about a film like Parasite if it wasn't for the fact that it got so much critical acclaim in like Western countries? Um, because it was produced by a Korean director. It's not in English. It's a Korean film about. A Korean perspective and it's not as likely that it would have made it into western audiences if it wasn't for the fact that it was so highly acclaimed awards wise that stuff does actually like impact how broad reaching art gets to other people 
wouldn't you say that's more of perhaps an issue with like the yellow tape of um award shows and this and, and these types of um I, I don't know how to put it exactly like i suppose the upper elite and not really uh the creatives you know what i mean like the people calling the shots when it comes to a corporate oh yeah money absolutely shit like that. Sure, sure. It's usually it's usually going to be the the richest people who are going to gatekeep that, and yep. like statistically, the richest people are going to be like older white men just by the numbers. So their perspective is, you know, they're going to have a bias for the things that they find compelling or entertaining, and so they're going to pick those things rather than give other people a shot. Yeah, yeah but I think that appeals to like basically anyone else. What do you mean? Well, I mean, like, we all have preferences, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what do you expect them to do? Just, like, not have those? Well, no, but uh, that's why it's important to have something like a diverse... So if you're having a panel of judges, you want a diverse amount of perspectives and people who have preferences so you can hear from each of them to understand different perspectives about a piece of media, right? Sure. I mean, people who are who people who happen to be from the same race can have a whole variety of different perspectives. Though. Well, yeah. Like I, I, I see what you mean. Like, uh, perhaps they should have some people who are, you know, um, <laughs> who, who have that different, you know, perspective because they're Asian or black or whatever. Like, yeah, sure. Maybe like when it comes to like an award show that that's fucking big. Yeah, I, I understand that. But when it comes to like, you know, individuals write, writing uh, stories and stuff like that, like. I, I don't know. I just feel like it, it's it, it's kind of taking attention away from the actual merit of, of the story in, in some cases. Like, here's how, here's how I look at it, and I just want to explain this so that you, you know where I stand. I, I don't feel like um, that diversity or someone's race should ever be used to, like, uh, sell a product, basically. But if a product is really good and uh, the main character happens to be black or Asian, then yeah, that's a plus. That's totally a good thing. Like that's that's a good piece of uh, that's a good piece of media that's making a good reflection and uh, getting diversity out there. That's that's what I want to see. I just have a problem when it's just people are pushing something because oh look at this black main character. Like that's why I feel like there's a huge difference between let's say I, I'm going to bring this up, but Captain Marvel and Black Panther. Black Panther much more competent movie. Uh, people really didn't get so pissed off at that, but that's why Captain Marvel was such a fucking culture war because it just wasn't wasn't a good movie. People didn't get mad at Captain Marvel because of anything in the movie. They got mad at it because of the actress and what she said outside of the movie, though. You're right. You are correct. I feel like there would have been less outrage, though, if if the movie was at least fucking competent, because I feel like... I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Captain Marvel. In fact, what I really enjoyed about it is that a lot of it was written from the perspective of women and experiences that we go through, and I thought it was really empowering, and I enjoyed that. Because uh, here's the difference. So, like, when I watch Black Panther, like, I mean, I am biracial, but I, I'm not. I'm not black, and uh, you know, I didn't take anything. It didn't take away anything because I wasn't black. Like, I still really enjoyed that movie. I, I was able to resonate with the messages that they were trying to tell because it wasn't just about being black. It was about it. It, it was more more all encompassing than that. The themes of that movie. Um, well, so. yeah. Th- the point isn't that it's just well, well, people are black because they're that. That's the only point of the movie and that's also not the only point of captain marvel either the story can be relatable to anybody not just women um but the the point of captain marvel or not captain marvel um black panther is that it did resonate strongly with a lot of uh black people specifically in the united states who never really saw themselves represented on such a large scale before in a huge blockbuster franchise like it was a big fucking deal to see that um very similar to shit like whenever Captain Uhura and Kurt kissed on TV for the first time. It was the first interracial kiss on television. And that was a big fucking deal. You know, like, I, there, is there anything wrong with celebrating that? Not necessarily. But, but like, like I not, I mean, actually, not at all. Not at all. But, you know, like I mentioned, I feel like, and I don't know, it's just my opinion. I mean, you know, art form is fucking subjective, but I, I, it seems like a lot more people um, did enjoy Black Panther overall compared to Captain Marvel. So I would just, like I, like I said, at that point, it's just like, if it's, if it's a quality product and it features diversity, then yeah, yeah, sure, that's a good fucking thing, but... Okay, but why, okay, so I have a question. If, why does it have to be a quality product in order for it to have a, div- a diverse cast? Like, why can't we have, so how how many schlocky bad films have white dudes as the lead that we don't blame the schlock on them being white 
but we do the same thing if you make like a really shitty movie with like a gay character or something. Well, I, well, well, I don't think it's because the, I don't think it's because they're, they're gay and or anything like that. I, I feel like the the only issue I have is like when a movie is more focused on like trying to suit a narrative. Let me just restart. I feel like there's a lot of movies these days which are just trying to gain control of the culture of zeitgeist. They're not trying to necessarily push an agenda, left or right. But what, what do they you want mean to by do the is like gain like, control of the cultural zeitgeist, though? Like they they want to capitalize on how many how much outrage there is among politics these days, among the right and left. Like when it comes to us, I feel like there's just there's plenty of movies, there's plenty of video games these days where they 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 shove in a, a, a diverse character not for the sake of actually trying to trying to make people feel included but they're just well, wait, doing it to get outrage on the internet wait, how so do you know that are well, why are you just assuming that it's for outrage and not because somebody because, behind because, the company actually wanted to do that because these massive corporations they they, they, they more often than not just do things for money and there's but a lot of money to be made in the there are individual artists that work for these corporations that sure. end up injecting these things like a sure. lot of video game dev companies now have more diverse like a uh, you know, employee roster. So they're more likely to get those perspectives in their elements of design as that company evolves. Sure, and so we see fine. that trend. And that's fine because that that's being done naturally, right? That that's being done in a way that's not disingenuous. Um, but I feel like when it comes to let's look at like let me just give an example. EA. Um, I, I, I'm not even saying that they've necessarily done this, but they're just a big video game company, so I brought them up. Uh, EA is a good fucking example. Like I wouldn't trust that. Like I wouldn't trust them to to do something like that and not have it be in fucking you know corporate interest. I, I feel like yeah, if an indie games developer uh, puts something like that into a game, then yeah, I mean they they don't have that fucking they don't, they don't have those fucking money bags weighing over them more than likely they're just doing it because they think that it would be something interesting or they think that that character would resonate with people and that's perfectly fine but i just but have I mean, a problem when it feels like a soulless corporate cash in and, and because in my opinion when people do that that's actually very um it's actually kind of racist in my opinion like to and i mean like it, it's not like we can put it past corporations to do that i mean like you yeah. know you, you see what they do with like you know pride month and shit like that Exactly. Well, yeah, there's exactly. like, rainbow exactly. capitalism is a thing, but here's yep. the thing, and here's a hot take. If a bunch of companies find it safe enough to basically take the perspective of supporting LGBT rights or whatever, then ha doesn't that say as a society it's become generally accepted that being gay is okay? To the point where you're well, being, yeah. I mean, you're like, being it's, it's marketed reflecting... to and advertised to? It's reflecting a point in time where like people have changed their views on that. I don't feel like that has an influence on it. If anything, it's a reflection in an attempt to fucking, you know, milk the masses. Well, you say, well, okay, so it is a reflection, but media also does have an influence on our society, too. Sure. Sure. Definitely. And, like, we have actual studies about that, which I brought a bunch of fucking links and shit. Um... But, like, we see stuff like, uh, you know, the Scully effect is, like, literally one of the most cited ones where uh, when Dana Scully was in the X-Files and that became popular, we saw a huge uptick of women in STEM fields who attributed that character to their interest in going into a STEM-related field. Um, it's, like, I think they said about, like, 50 to 60 percent of uh, women, like, in that age group that grew up with the show attributed that character to their interest so media influences a lot of like the things we go on to do in life and like what do we see ourselves doing if you see somebody that looks like you or you can relate to the, or or has a story that's very similar to things you've experienced going on to do good things it does have a positive impact in your life and I, I don't know, I guess I don't give a fuck if it's corporate or not. If it's a positive influence, then I'm fine. I, I definitely I mean, see when, your perspective. When it's a corporate attempt at a cash grab, I just view it as like the, the cheap attempt that it is. Yeah, to me, yeah, like, it, it just I, makes me uncomfortable to see someone's race or gender like kind of marginalized down to like money or profit. That's just, I don't know. I, I see what you mean, though. Like, if it does good for someone in the long run, then it's probably not so bad. I mean... Our corporations do this type of shit all the fucking time, but it still does make me uncomfortable. Like, uh, But we also, like, I mean, it's not just marginalized groups that get exploited for that, too. They play to all kinds of different groups of people because that's what makes true. them more money. It's very true. I, I don't know. Maybe so, that's probably more of a corporate issue in, in our country than a fucking social issue. But, yeah. All right. So do you, do you want to move on to um the, the yeah. back and forth you guys had on Twitter? 
Sure, I'm good to talk about that. Yeah, uh, I right. also did want to bring up the... Um, there were comments made about privilege and stuff that I, I also want to go into as well. Okay, sure. Let's okay, well, we'll put that on hold and, you know, we'll just get this over and done with. All right, so... You guys have had, like, multiple uh, interactions on Twitter, I've seen. Yeah, we've talked about um, quite a few. And during one of them, you made the assumption that Anna Manser is, like, a privileged white male or some shit like she, that. Uh, okay, she didn't say that I was a privileged... She didn't say I was a white male. I want to make that clear. She didn't I, say that. Yeah, okay, I never so, so said then, a specific what, what, race or, or gender or anything. I said... Okay, my, then what did you say? My specific comment was, that take sounds like it's coming from someone who's never not seen themselves represented in media, I believe was... It should be close yeah, yes, to what I tweeted. Yeah, that's that's basically what okay, you said. Yeah. Okay, okay, well, how do you possibly know that? I don't. It's a, an assumption based on the take that was given to me. And it can be wrong because, yeah, there are outliers of people who don't feel like who feel the way you feel and and don't see themselves represented in media very often okay so. so like maybe based on that you shouldn't presume things about people i mean to be fair she did apologize to me on on that part um sure i'm did, just what, trying what, to like, figure out say? like why why that happened in the first place like what was the thought process behind that comment because I mean, I oftentimes do. when you experience something like that you empathize with other people who feel similarly well apparently not <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm a very unique case because I'm um I, I'm I'm biracial I'm bisexual I'm all those fucking things um so yeah that sure that comment did rub me the wrong way because I, I'm definitely someone who who has not been proper sure. I, I guess but I mean like you know by definition to her to Sarah's credit she, like she did apologize yeah no her. definitely so I'm not gonna hold that against her or anything but I I'm glad that we brought that up right. at least yeah yeah something else uh. You you said to me though was you you made a comment about like incels or some shit like that. Yes. All right. So, what gives? <laughs> Is a uh, Twitter snark like off the off the table here or something? No. You guys no. seem I mean, like, really you know, any, sensitive whenever I joke about shit. I don't know. Uh, it's not, it's not that like it's just like you you, uh, you should know this like it's impossible. I'm just to curious because like you know you talk Twitter. shit and I'm like all right well you're on the show so fucking yeah? go for it. Okay. Did you just want me to come here and call you in cells and leave? Was that the purpose? No I elaboration. That's my goal. Sure, I made a joke about you being in cells and sitting there complaining about uh because you all seem to also talk really hard shit on your show when I wasn't able to be there in person to respond. And now on that episode, you're we acting did. way more courteous now that I'm here. So uh, On that episode, I mean, we did say that I'd be, I, I mean, I said that I'd be willing to talk to you on the show at any time. I mean, like, you know, courtesy is reflected. You know, you, you fucking, you've been, um, you know, not nice, but I mean, like, you know, f kind of fun to talk to so far. So, like, what the fuck happened? I mean, like, you know, on Twitter, it's like, you know, you Oh, you guys are incels, lol. But then when you're on here, it's like, oh, you guys are you guys are being courteous. Well, yeah. If you if you fucking put on that act, we're gonna reflect that. No, I was literally reflecting back the the energy I got from your show where you pulled up my tweet and started talking about it. The clip that somebody sure. had sent me. Because it's kind of fucking retarded, isn't it? What? The tweet. No. All right. Well, I beg to differ. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think it's kind. Of, I don't know. Like, I mean, people people engage on this type of shit on Twitter all the time. Like, what's my opinion on it? Like, yeah, maybe it's kind of, kind of a pointless comment. Like, I don't really think incel applies to us at all. But like, it, you know, it's just fucking. Like she said, it's just shit that people typically do on Twitter. I don't really have that much of an issue with it. I mean, it's inaccurate. I do want to make clear to anyone who's watching this: Hey, guys, we aren't incels, and I hate incels as much as you guys do. But that's all we really no, need you, to do. You gotta prove it. That's all you we really need it. to say. I think like <laughs> that, that's that's about it when it comes to that. Um, no. no. <laughs> all right, swag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's move on to the next thing because I, I don't think we're gonna get anywhere with like the incel comment. No, I mean. I was hoping for like some kind of acrimony, but there's fucking nothing. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, no. dude. I mean, it just, like, it just goes I don't to know. show like how I'm fucking different snarky. Twitter is. You know? I'm just yeah. snarky in general and snarky on Twitter. And I don't know if I made a joke that like genuinely upset you, then I guess I'm sorry about that. But yeah, that's well, fine. I am literally offended. Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> I'm so sorry. That God I hurt your damn. feelings. 
Thank you. Well, I, I identify with being snarky. So oh my god. I guess god. like there's some common ground. You just fucking cry. Alright, what are we gonna talk about next? I don't know, Sarah mentioned something. Was it Jay that I, the clip was? Yeah, Jay. Talking about privilege yeah. not existing? Uh, what, what did you I say that you took issue with? You said specifically that white privilege doesn't exist. The only privilege that exists is uh, monetary based privilege. Yeah, true, in my opinion. I mean, Which... look. Uh, okay, because okay, you I I know the argument. You want to say like oh, because like there's a lot of like rich white people, and you know most billionaires are white, most CEOs are white. Well, therefore, no, not... white people have privilege. I don't have any of that. No, privilege. that's I'm not, not rich. No, 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 no. Hey, Jay, that's not how white privilege works. I, I don't want to straw I... man you. So go ahead and explain. That's not how it works at all. So privilege as okay, a concept, explain. something like white privilege doesn't mean that all white people have never struggled, because I am white. I have had struggles. I've hard, had hardships. I've been poor. I've been on food stamps. I've been in a fuck. I lived in a house where the roof was leaking and I had to put pots and pans down. Uh, you know, couldn't afford anything paycheck to paycheck. I'm not saying when I have white privilege that I am better off than everyone else by default, like because I am white. the pur The purpose of privilege, of any kind of privilege, is that so. Say I'm a poor white person, I am going to have it marginally better than a black person who is in the same exact monetary category as me. Like, if we have equal struggles and everything else, I at least don't have to worry about the fact that I'm, I'm probably not going to get profiled by the police, uh, specifically because I'm a white woman. And that's one thing that I guess you could say women have more privilege. I'm not considered a danger. Men, like, uh, say, a black man would have much more uh, of a chance of being profiled by the police as, like, dangerous uh, or discriminated against in that way, where that's not something that I have to deal with on a day to day basis. Um, it's not saying that white people can't have struggles or, or can't understand struggle. I mean, okay, I, I, I'll first of all say that I actually have been uh, uh, harassed by police before multiple times, and maybe it is because I'm a because I'm a man. Uh, but the other thing is, um, I mean, look, like yes, it, it's I, I will admit. Like it's it's harder for black people in some ways because yeah they they do get targeted more by the police, but how is that on me as a white person? It's not on you. No one's blaming you. The the white guilt thing seems to be a, a that's not what you a, should be a big taking thing for a lot privilege. of people. No, that's not what you should be taking from the i the, the the concept of things like privilege. Like no one's saying that it's necessarily your fault or that you've done anything to make it worse the point is acknowledging that that is something you may not have to deal with and then listening to other people like people of color who deal with that and then saying oh well maybe this is an issue we should worry about like things like police reform or or criminal justice reform because we see those things where um like black americans are targeted more they are more uh, likely to be incarcerated for lesser offenses um even though like black and white people use drugs at the same rate black people are more likely to be charged for using drugs shit like that like as they long also as tend you... to get like uh, I mean... higher prison sentences compared to uh, white people in general yeah and it's the same thing no, I... men tend to get longer prison sentences than women do for committing the same crimes That's true. That's true. so I recognize all of that the the only thing is i mean like 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 yes for for most black people they have to worry about those extra things but that doesn't mean that a black person like a poor black person is inherently less privileged than a poor white person there could be something in that white person's life that you don't even know about that makes well, them yeah. a million times less privileged i'm just so, saying like it's not always on racial lines well, no no it's not and that's what intersectionality is about intersectionality talks about every single factor in a person's life so your gender your sexuality your gender presentation your race everything all of those things are like spectrums that uh, of of you know societal 
uh, pressure that, or yeah. anything that you have to deal with that can affect the way that your life comes out. You can, as a white person, experience a much worse life than a individual black person. But it, when it comes to the concept of privilege, it's not about individuals. It's usually about systemic issues. So, like, in general, systemically, LGBT people have a lot more problems to deal with than, say, a straight person. Like, literally discrimination. It What, what was it, 2016, when we finally legalized gay marriage? And yeah, that wasn't yeah. a that wasn't a thing that straight people had to deal with and, uh, for generations before, you know. So it's not it's not always about race. No, privilege comes in all sorts of forms. Oh, sure. And it, well, I'm it, I, I'm oh. I'm LGBT as well. Okay, I'm I'm bi, and I'm also I I don't Me too. see hit. Here's the thing. Hey, here's the thing. The gayest podcast. This is the ever. bias podcast I've ever done. <laughs> Hell yeah, well, dude. Here's the thing, though, because I, I go a step further because not only do I not – like, I, 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 I don't personally believe in gender identity. And if I, if I took it a step further, I could say, like, yes, I am non-binary. But I don't, I, I don't feel the need to attach that label to myself because I'm honestly – like, personally, I'm okay with who I am as a person. And if other people have a problem with that, like, that's on them. So, like, I, I, I don't see the need to go around and, and be like, hey, everybody, I'm, I'm fucking non-binary. I'm, I'm, I'm a bisexual, non-binary male. Then why did you just or, introduce or, or, yourself as male. bisexual to me just now? Why did you say that you were LGBT? But it's, I, I mean, I admit that I fit into those categories, but I don't like to wear the label as if it means something more about myself than what it is. I'm, I, I, I like... Uh, like I'm sexually attracted to men and women, you know, but that doesn't tell you anything about me other than the fact that I'm a, a sexually attracted to men and women, you know, yeah, I, nobody else I, is I, ever is using it to say it means anything more about you than that. People try to infer too much when you give them a label like that. Like if you say, oh, I'm, I'm this or I'm that, then people will try and like infer all these different things about you that don't apply to you just because they've had experiences in the past with someone who might be this way. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what I ha that's the problem I have with labels, too. That's why I don't use many labels like, yeah, sure. Am I biologically a man? Yes, but I still I don't call around like calling myself one because well, like... no but society still deems you that and will judge you as that no matter if you call yourself that or not what? like if i would if i was open and in a relationship with a woman right now society would sure. still judge me on that whether i identified with it or not that's what it's about it's about society and how they view you and not saying that well this is like tells everything about me i don't care how society views me and i personally i don't care to be accepted by society or viewed as normal like uh, if society wants to view me as some kind of deviant or some kind of weirdo like good i don't want to be fucking viewed as as normal in this fucked up society that's honestly like i i don't understand the need to be like because that actually does have know, impacts like, on mental health i mean like so we see over time like how the how people are treated and ostracized leads to things like higher suicide rates higher depression rates like you can say i don't care but on average people do care people actually do care about feeling like they're comfortable and safe and and accepted in society and that's just a fact that you're gonna have to deal with and people find that important it may not be compelling to you but to a lot of people it is very important to them well, no, that's fair enough. I mean, I don't even mind that it's important to those people. I have a problem where people try and start, like, pushing their ideology onto others. Like, it's like you have to – to go back to the Stephen King thing for a second, like, if Stephen King himself doesn't believe that, that's, that, that, that privilege or diversity or whatever is important, then why are other people trying to pressure him into, into holding those same beliefs? You know, if someone is it personally, pressure or is it people just disagreeing? 
I, I would definitely say it I is peer pressure, considering the fact that he felt the need to come out and say it was <laughs> that he doesn't believe yeah. it anymore. Do you really think that he genuinely changed his mind, or you think he's just saying that because he got enough hate? I on have Twitter? no idea because I, I don't know him as a person. But if he received that and he reflected and he realized that what he said meant either was coming off as he meant something that he didn't mean to, or he genuinely changed his perspective. Like, I don't know the guy. None of us do. We're not going to know if he genuinely changed his mind. But so what? Like, are we going to okay, ban well, open how, how, how can you then assume his intent behind the initial tweet? I'm not. We're making a reasonable assumption based off of what he said. That's all we I can mean, do. Well, the other thing is, do you want him to have changed his position just because, uh, just because he was pressured into it? No, I want him to change his position because maybe he heard another perspective and then reasoned himself into it. Because if you don't reason yourself into it and you believe something for no reason, then it it's you're not gonna have that, you know, perspective founded on like evidence or anything like that. It, it's gonna be pretty weak. Three, it's the same as uh, the fucking uh, what was it? The fucking Pascal's wager shit when it comes to religion. It's like uh, I don't actually believe this, but I'm just gonna pay lip service to it anyway because the I'm fucking just gonna hedge my bets. Yeah. yeah. Well, although in this case, it's more because like the mob around me is fucking you know closing in and saying I I I, I said something I shouldn't. So. But I mean, yeah, how do you time feel? Time to change my position. How do you feel about it whenever, say, a bunch of people disagree with like someone who's like a white nationalist, like genuinely somebody who's like, I think that we should. Like, uh, you know, this race is better than everyone I mean, else. Kind I mean, of thing. honestly, like, you gotta be careful, you know, Twitch and all. Sorry, no, guys. whenever you discuss, I understand Twitch to us. Whenever you discuss this, it's fine. Um, so how do you feel if somebody goes around saying something like that and a bunch of people openly disagree? I mean, let people disagree. People can have their opinions, though. Like, l look, same with anything. If people want to disagree with this, I don't even care that people were disagreeing. People can fucking disagree. Yeah. The thing that I think is 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 kind of weak is that, you know, Stephen King just, like, he says something, you know, supposedly on principle, and then just the hate mob closes in, and it's like, oh, shit, time to change my position and pretend I never said that. Yeah. But how do you and, know? Uh, how do you know that he took it that way and not the way? Like, how do you know he genuinely didn't change? Like, do you know Stephen King personally? No, but I, I, it, it seems to me like a lot of people are trying to get him to change his position. That's the thing. Like, look, like if if people want to disagree with white nationalists and be like, you're a fucking moron, whatever, fine. But like, and if you want to fucking try and change the positions, you can. But it's it's. It's not fucking. Th there's no point in it, like because people Why are gonna believe no what they're gonna believe. Well, no, because people, people change. What they're gonna believe. People change I their mean, beliefs all the time. I've changed my sure. beliefs quite a bit over the course of my life, and it's thanks to other people who have talked to me and helped me work through reason. And I've, you know, through other people and discussions and having a healthy conversation, I've changed my beliefs over time. Tons okay, well, of people you know that plenty of people are not that reasonable. I think on as a, yeah, I mean, a whole, most people are pretty fucking reasonable when you actually wearing talk to them. a someone who's wearing I'm not a talking white about most hood. people. I'm talking about like you know the the, the fucking white nationalist. Yeah, grifters, some, someone like, who's yeah. someone who's like that far far gone. They're not just going to change their position because they they were reasoned to. Okay. Well, like, no, we, there we, are we, plenty of I know there there's actually somebody in um so in Jake's community, my boyfriend. Uh, there's actually somebody who's a big. A part of our community who was an ex-Nazi who came out of it and saw that it was a hate group and I mean that's changed cool their life like I'm that not does happen. That, that happens of course I, I, it happens. Here, here's a th here's the thing though um, here, here, here's what I would bring up you, generally that type of stuff happens over the course of uh, of a decent amount of time right. at least a few months not not just over the course of like one one week of getting harassed on twitter generally exactly. now i'm not gonna say yeah. i'm not gonna say that for sure and now maybe in, maybe in stephen's king maybe in stephen king's uh, case he actually did legitimately change his opinion but you have to admit that this, this type of stuff happens on twitter all the time and, and no doubt that there's been plenty of cases where people do just change their opinion to save face so that they stop getting hit, hate from people on on twitter and shit like that well yeah so if you want to talk about like how twitter itself or social media has kind of poisoned our ability to have discourse that's a completely different topic than just saying well these hate mobs are trying to get their ideology 
out or whatever like it, it almost sounds a little tinfoil because we see the, the same bra- thing happen to like contrapoints got canceled by twitter yeah, and dealt true. with a bunch of harassment and you know uh, a bunch of other people on the left have come out and said like hey you know there are people on the other ends of these accounts even if they're moderately big accounts and they still read all this stuff and it's still harassment and it hurts and it's not productive and that's why i don't typically mob people for having wrong opinions on on you know twitter usually i try to get into a one-on-one conversation or i try to talk in voice if it's something you know yeah no that's fair specific that's a lot better than most people on Twitter tend to do, so I'll, I'll definitely say that. So that's good. Which I but. I actively try to tell people that that's not a productive way of discussing. Now I understand why people want to jump to that because emotionally, the first response when you have someone saying something, even if they're saying it out of ignorance, uh, that that could be I don't know. You can interpret it worse. Your first response is that you're gonna want to jump in angry. But that's not necessarily the most productive response. I agree with that. I, I completely agree with what you said there. Yeah. So, like, I, I empathize with why people would, like, call out Stephen King and, and a bunch of people would jump on a bad take um, and why it would frustrate them or they'd say what they'd say, even if I don't think it's the best answer. Yeah, I, I saw someone in the replies to Stephen King say white nationalism is a hell of a drug. Like, come on. Yeah, no, I think that <laughs> even that kind of hyperbole, it can do yeah. damage sometimes. Definitely, I agree with that. Yep. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. All I right. like it. Yeah, me too, definitely. Mm. Um, is there anything else you want to discuss? I mean, if we if we run out of shit to say, we can talk about some stupid right wingers. I mean, we, we pulled some content. If you want to look at that, Rick but. Wiles. Rick uh, Wiles. No, that was that was kind of it. It was mostly. I think the thing that uh, uh, guess annoyed me the most was Jay's take on privilege. But I guess it's because I used to have that same take back when I was on like I think it was like on Tumblr in like 2012 because the communication from the left and progressives oftentimes especially back then hasn't been the best and so that's why i and others really like to actually improve how we communicate those ideas and there's a lot of misconceptions around things like the concept of like privilege that we end up agreeing on in the end if you actually just listen um i i didn't give a lot of left-wing creators a chance i used to be an anti-sjw type and listen to those kinds of people and then when i actually listened to lefties on uh like youtube i was like oh they're actually reasonable like the they were just being straw man the whole time so. yeah that, that that happens that happens to a lot of people i, I do want to say thank you though for uh, coming on here and having this conversation with us i really do appreciate that it, it, i wish more people would you know would actually you know engage in conversations try and find some middle ground have an actual dialogue that's that's a good thing more things that we need to see on the internet like this but, well uh thank thanks for inviting me on to clarify i'll let you guys have fun with the rest of your content and i'm gonna yeah, go i don't know if you want to i don't know if you want to hang around while we play fucking rick wiles <laughs> ranting about the jews I yeah i know no. <laughs> i'm right. probably gonna go and uh, hang out with my chat so you guys have a good one all right take it easy all have right. a good one thank you very much thanks for being on bye Peace. she was terrible God. yo i like her what the fuck jesus christ <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Done. She was uh, I know. She yeah. she she was uh, reasonable enough, but I still disagree with the. I I don't. Know, I disagree on some level with the privilege thing, but I see where she's coming from. Yeah, she she did so. offer some perspectives that I wasn't expecting to hear, and I was happy to hear that. So yeah, no, I'm glad with how that went. Um. All right. Well, let's watch some videos. Rick Quiles, the pro-Israel owner of the Times of Israel newspaper, uh, he's backing Pete. homosexual mayor Pete Buttigieg. Wow, it only took like 10 <laughs> seconds for him to just become a total fucking yeah. worthless sack of shit. Dude, he's, he's having all those gay thoughts. That's why he's going so slow. He's thinking about Pete Buttigieg taking it up the booty. Yeah, he's like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Homosexual Pete Buttigieg. Yes. All right. And he's the money man behind this app. Yes. Yes. Are you are you suggesting that the Israelis? <laughs> pause, pause, the guy, pause. 
I, I just want to point out the guy said nothing at all, and immediately Rick Wiles is like, "Are you suggesting?" And it, I'm, I'm, I'm promising you, like it's gonna be followed up by like some horrible fucking heinous shit. Yeah. That just like Rick Wiles projects on this fucking toady. Are influencing the election to have the Democrats nominate its first openly homosexual president. I didn't say fucking call that. Call that. I knew it. Yep, you got right. Well, gee, Rick, I mean, like, I never thought of it that way, but, you know, you know me better than myself. Yeah, hot so, cheese. Uh, agree with that. What happened last night is weird. <laughs> it's, it's, weird. it's weird. It's, it's weird. weird. It is. Somebody should, like, send a bunch of fucking, like, gay porn to his P.O. Dude, box. it's, it's 690069. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Rick Wiles, you sly boots. Dude, dude someone, so, someone send weird. Rick, like, a big dildo, like a big fucking 12 <laughs> donger, dude, right now. Please. Great connection. Yeah, dude. Imagine that. There's an Israeli connection to the Iowa disaster last How night. How do you know? Well, the Times of Israel report oh that. No, I don't know. What? Because, like, an Israeli new paper talked about it? Okay. Cool. It's not like any other newspaper no, did. They might accuse yeah, but being the Jews said it, so. for saying it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. But the truth is... I was applying is logic Israeli for a second. Like, my bad. That's your problem, man. ...that bombed last night in Iowa. But you're not allowed to say these things. Everybody's- You're saying, saying it right now! It's like the same thing he did, like, the during the last clip of his we played. It's like, I'm not allowed to say this, and I'm suppressed, and they're not letting me say what I want to say. It's like, well, obviously they are. Yeah, it's not like you're a fucking Democratic candidate saying the DNC is corrupt. You can go up on and fucking say this shit. I, I don't really understand where the fuck this is coming from. You're not on some fucking mainstream news media. You're not on fucking Fox News. You're not on fucking CNN. You're on fucking True News without the fucking E. That's what you're on right now. <laughs> and God on top damn. of that, I mean, like, you know, you, you have your audience, and it's God obvious that, you. you know, the, the evil Jews are not suppressing you. You still have your fucking show. You still have your, you know, moronic audience. Yeah, that's the funny thing, too. These people love to pay, play the fucking victim. Like, oh, man, I'm so persecuted. Look, I can't even say all these fucking things. While at the same time, they're, they're trying to be like, no, we're giving you the truth here. And nothing but the truth. We're giving you the fucking straight facts. We aren't going to censor ourselves for you. So which one fucking is it? Are you telling the truth or are you giving us bullshit? Both. Who? The same yeah. people who are doing this stuff. Right. Tree. I mean, this isn't too hard to figure out what's going on. A coup, a takeover of the United uh -huh. States. It's a America. very gradual takeover. Like, it's been taking fucking How forever. Is that he's going after Pete and not uh, Bernie? Because, like, Bernie is actually the Jewish candidate. Oh, he'll bring that up. But I it's believe. like, it's oh, like, yeah, oh, but Mayor Pete is going to, he's this homosexual. I saw uh, I saw a clip from uh, Ben Shapiro because I was checking Right Wing Watch for some content as I as I tend to do because it's full of fucking content. And Ben Shapiro he was uh, he was making fun of Bernie because apparently he was like oh he just keeps using the I'm Jewish card. When has he ever oh used God. that card, like, dude? Once. And that's coming from yeah. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, Jesus. dude, that entire clip well, I was him using the I'm Jewish card to make fun of Bernie Sanders for being for saying that he's Jewish. Yeah. That's all it fucking is. Unless we resist. Now let me, I'll say one final thing about the takeover. No. I've warned the American people for years. Oh God. It's been bullshit yeah. for years. And nothing's ever Thank fucking God. happened. Yep. If we did not repent as a nation. <laughs> Remember that fucking, taken... that, that war that happened just five years ago where like all the Christians were like, oh yeah, my you know, bad. bombed. In their, in their fucking churches, like, churches across America have been just, like, bombed and shot up and ravaged and destroyed, and, Never and forget, Christians Jay. are on the run and hiding, Never reading forget, their Jay. Bibles uh, uh, <laughs> under, yeah. Under the sea, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and made slaves. This, the, we're witnessing it right now. Yes. We're about Are we? Because I haven't seen anything. Activity right now. They're shutting down dissenting voices. They're censoring. Oh, you've hey, shut it down. Refuse to go along with the agenda. Citation They're needed. Hello, prove the this. Activity right. No, it's true news. It's fine. Now, don't question we're this. It's true without a fucking freedom. e. And 
Dude, it's funny, because, like, a lot of these conspiracy nuts, they're like, they're lying to you, now listen to my fucking platitude of bullshit. Yep. Like, okay. Yeah, dude, I would never right. lie to you. Hey, thank you. Tweet. I have nothing to say, so ooh, woo, ooh, woo, oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I can't believe you just so, made me uh, say that tweet, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> I don't know which one is oh, whoa, but, you know. <laughs> the last one. We'll find out. Yeah. We're being taken over by a foreign power that is anti-Christ. The very people who yeah, 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 as you say while you vote for fucking like Donald Trump. Trump. Masters. As you say while you probably fucking vote for Donald Trump, who is funded fucking Israel. Like, if you want, if you want to hate Israel, that's fucking fine. But stop fucking supporting oh, the president who's literally funding their existence. <laughs> Anytime, like Donald Trump says anything positive about Israel, like you'll find these white nationalists on Twitter be like, "God fucking damn it, I voted for him." It's like, all right, well, what did you? <laughs> what yeah, you're expect? gonna vote for him again too. He's he's a fucking re uh, Republican. I mean, like, of course he's gonna suck Israel's dick. Why the fuck wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna vote for a Jew. Oh yeah, you can vote between Trump and a Jew, dude. That's the best thing about if, if fucking Bernie gets the nomination. These white nationalists, they're not gonna know what to fucking do with themselves. Oh well, I could vote for the person that literally funds Israel's existence, or I could vote for the first Jewish president. Um, 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 and then they fucking shoot themselves and their life like they should. All right. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's a good finale. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, back to this. Donald Trump had walked through a, can a field of candidates of 17 different candidates. Some of them, as it turns out now, are good people. Were deep state <laughs> operatives. Others of them were Washington elitist establishment. There were two or three that I think were fairly sincere, uh, as Andrew sincere Yang. as Donald Trump was about the things they love about America, constitutional republic, rule of law. But they Yang tended Tulsi. to be a little Yang, more on Yang the politically Tulsi correct Bernie, side, yeah. and Donald Trump just stepped up like a wrecking ball. Well, <laughs> for the leftist, the yeah, socialist, came in like a wrecking God ball. haters, most of them are the America haters, the Constitution haters. They are why the fuck? Like, why do they associate giving people health care and shit like that? But like, you know, they hate America and the Constitution. It seems like they're more patriotic than you are. I'm very pro Constitution. Con I'm very pro Carl constitution Gallops. and I believe in universal health care. So I don't know where you are what the fuck is. Yeah. And I believe in universal basic income. I'm way more fucking patriotic <laughs> than you. Yeah, yeah dude. Democracy. This guy talking about like, the at this least election. like I as a fucking at least like I as a Swede, I'm like, you know what? Americans should have some kind of like monetary safety net they can rely on if they yeah. fall on hard times. Yeah. But like with this sack of shit, it's like, no, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Anything other than that is like anti-Christian, anti-American, anti-patriotism. I guess just nod your head and just buy into the jingoism and just keep voting R. It's true. Yeah, I, dude, I can't wait to ask War Corps about 9/11. Anyway, <laughs> let's Whether they call themselves this or not, they're largely globalist. They they have this demonic spirit in oh, them. Oh, it's you, Jay. It's you. Whether they're Jay, it's you, Damn, dude. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a demon because I'm a globalist, dude. Dude, you literally are globalism? a demon, Jay. That's all I, I am, are. dude. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, to feed it or foster it or not, they do. And the Bible tells us these things would happen. But they the Bible have, also tells you not to mix fabrics. They have this spirit in them uh, of hating hypocrite. all things biblical, all things godly, all things Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, hating all Just things hate. that are pure truth. Hating yes, all things hate. that have any righteousness attached to them at all. Instead, they plunge themselves yes. into socialism, communism, and buttholes. And uh, buttholes. The Don't forget the buttholes, dude. Don't forget the fucking buttholes. Uh, we plunge into all kinds of fucking and buttholes. Darkness and sexual He's got those in his mind 24/7. Yeah, dude. Him and Rick worry about marriage that. Marriage and gender and home and family and all of these things. The confusion of national borders and national sovereignty and and so what happens is th thing. then the world collapses in on itself and this amalgamation that say amalgamation you fucking dumbass it's, it's pronounced amalgamation oh fuck off <laughs> retard idiot juice retard. You, you, you know he got that word out of a fucking thesaurus today and he didn't learn how to properly pronounce it on fucking youtube so he went yeah. and fucking just set it out on his stupid live stream no, I'm Malgamation. good with sesquipedalian words. I'm fine. Yep. Don't worry about me. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at a pastor. Who the fuck is this? This is like um, 
a cheap knockoff of Pastor Steven Anderson. This is Greg Locke. It's yeah. an old video that I pulled. Locke. Less than Steven Anderson. Um, yeah, so this is, like, I found this on Facebook. I don't know, I follow, like, some different, like, you know, DFF kind of pages. So sometimes people will uh, post shit like this, like, just share videos where they're like, look at this retard. Homosexual Jesus. I like that. One of my favorite songs by uh, Corporate Avenger is uh, Jesus Christ Homosexual. So I'm hoping this is going to be, like, an album <laughs> review or something. <laughs> look, folks, at the end of the day... Jesus, look at those fucking chambers. There are some things that are just off-limits. Now Netflix produces a show about Jesus being a homosexual when he's 30 years yeah, old. He comes home to his family like, and brings his... I want to watch that. <laughs> Dude, just, that this guy cool. sounds like... That, yo. Oh, this no. guy sounds like uh, <laughs> like how I sound when I'm trying to do like a voice of a stupid, generic stupid person. You oh, know I, I thought mean? you were going to say like an even more retarded fucking Kyle from Secular Talk. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> what? That sounds like a... <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you oh, flipping kidding me? <laughs> How much meth do you have to smoke flippin to be that God, unbelievably flippin'? He said flippin'. He said fucking flippin'. He watched it from the series flippin' freaking prick. Oh, spittle stick. If they were to do that frickin against Islam and make Muhammad a gay person, the backlash would be unbelievable. They wouldn't dare do that, and rightly so. Yeah, they would. Was it fucking. What about uh, the the fucking um? God, what was it called? It was like a. No. It, it was like a, a parody a comic thing in France where, like, you know, Muslims fucking yeah. shot him. Dude, can I Charlie just say... Charlie Hebdo. That was it. Yo. Can, can, can I just say for a second? I hate it. I absolutely hate it when these Christians, that that most of, 90% of the time, it's like, fuck Muslims. But then when it suits their fucking narrative, it's like... Yeah, no, well, you wouldn't disrespect the Prophet Muhammad in this way, and right, you shouldn't, because that's disrespectful. And it's like, dude... Shut the fuck up. You disrespect Muhammad all the fucking time. You fucking Christians talk like Muslims are the biggest pieces of shit. But the minute it suits your narrative, you're all buddy-buddy. Yeah. This is brat bad as Brett. <laughs> same with Jews, honestly. They treat Jews the exact same way. All they're pieces of shit until we can use them to feel good about ourselves, right? the jews but oh we gotta protect israel because it's god's chosen people even though fuck them they killed jesus even though jesus was a jew <laughs> this is so fucking retarded and yet christians are defending this utter wicked blasphemous nonsense oh, it's just comedy it's not comedy it's blasphemy jesus was not a homosexual. Comedy. oh if my god dude i know who this guy is now i'm gonna blow your fucking mind dude blow right. me this is this is the Christian version of Kyle from Non Sequitur. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Jack my shit. What the fuck? Follower yeah. of Jesus Christ, and you condone a homosexual Jesus? I wonder and I question who you're really following. I, I question who the fuck your dentist is. This what is the not fuck? a call to boycott <laughs> Netflix. This is a call for Netflix to man up and realize. Oh how wait, you meant Non Sequitur? You said Secular Talk. You said Kyle from Secular Talk, Swag. <laughs> Not, 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 no, yeah, oh that. shit, no. Fuck, no. Yeah, you said no, I actually like that, Kyle. Like, Sorry. Uh, yeah, Dude, yeah. Kyle Kalinsky, I fucking apologize. Holy shit, I feel bad now. <laughs> no, I was talking about non sequitur. Yeah, I, I, that's right? why I made I that joke. I was like, oh man. <laughs> God damn. No, no, not at all. I like Kyle. All right, good. How good. unbelievably. I, I like the, the pig fucking shitting thing that he keeps posting on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fucking week. funny. Yeah. Blasphemous this is, and pull the show. Who cares? Who the f who gives a Go fuck? fuck? Oh yourself. my god! Who the hell <laughs> cares? No one. I'll pay it. No one at all. I'll Pastor pay Locke. Suck my cock, Pastor Locke. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh play some Trump shit. Trump oh, Lord. Trump, 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 Trump. Because yeah. I don't think our audience has gotten en enough of that elsewhere. Nope. Nope. Well, I thought it was a terrible thing. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to play this after. Sorry. My bad. Whoops. Family there. knows the pain when a loved one is diagnosed with a serious illness. Illness. Here tonight is a special man. Rush Limbaugh. Why is it quiet? Oh, yeah. She's uh, ripping up uh, yep. a copy of his speech. Okay. I made a, I made a tweet yeah. about this if you want me to give my take. Yeah, so... So, so uh, just to be clear, like for our listeners, Nancy Pelosi is like fiddle fucking with a, a copy of Trump's speech right behind him, and uh, at one point she rips it up 
which is yeah. like a meaningless fucking gesture, yeah. but you know, whatever. So I think it's I think it's completely Child. fucking petty. I, I I already hated Nancy Pelosi, but the fact that she keeps this is not the first time, by the way, she keeps trying to get these gotcha moments on Trump and keeps failing. She's really trying to do her best to fucking drag the Democrats down to Trump's level of pettiness, to drag our entire political fucking dialogue in this country down to his level of fucking pettiness, so that we all talk like him, just fucking giving fifth grade fuck fucking speeches yeah that's what we should all be doing we should just yeah wh why work together and at least fucking pretend that we're working together to try and make this country a better place when you could just do petty no. fucking little bullshit like this no. you, you know how, no. you, you know how this no. looks you know how it looks when she fucking ripped up this guy's fucking speech you know how amazing you know how many americans probably looked at that and we're like, oh my god, that's so fucking petty. People who probably look at Trump for some reason and don't think that what he's doing is petty. They looked at what she did and thought it was petty. Well, it still doesn't look fucking good and you shouldn't fucking do it. Aren't you going to try and fucking be above that? No, I guess not. You just want to go down to their fucking level <laughs> and play their fucking rules? It's fucking ridiculous. A waste of everyone's fucking time. It looks so fucking petty. The, the only good argument, the only good argument for this that I've seen at all is someone mentioned on Facebook. If this ends up being his last uh, State of the Union, then he'll look back on it with complete utter fucking disgust yeah. because it'll be it'll be soiled by the fact that that she ripped it up like this. And yeah, I mean, sure, that's fucking true, but it, whatever. It's still fucking petty bullshit. It wasn't fucking worth it, even if that ends up being the case. Pulling stupid bullshit like this is gonna get Trump another four fucking years. So if you don't want that, then fucking change something about your tactics, dude. Let's I be call honest. Bullshit. Pelosi would rather have that. Than uh, Bernie Sanders as president, because oh, then that means Ugh. a reveal. Yeah, it's sad. But hey, I mean, can, can, can they just get this fucking walking corpse off the stage and just like let her fucking retire at this point? Because I'm so sick of seeing Nancy uh, Pelosi's melting fucking face. How about how about take her out back and uh, you know put her down like old Yella? Uh. She is a government official, so I don't know if, if so, anyone should say I that. Mean, I mean, I'm uh, not suggesting anyone does that. Uh, that was a that was a joke. This is the second illusion if it were legal, we made to someone getting if shot. If it were legal and I had to, in full self defense, shoot Nancy Pelosi in the face, I would. I would not hesitate. I would fucking bury her within minutes. See, here's in, why in Underhaven's no situation. longer on Twitch, guys. Here's yeah. why Underhaven's no longer trademark on Twitch. Sam Hunt. Yeah, I didn't go that far. I was like, someone should, but <laughs> someone shouldn't, obviously. But maybe I, I don't know. It she would be entertaining if Trump did that. Though. She should shove it up her ass instead. That'd be funny. Dude, none of these people in this frame look normal, aside from the, like the black chick on the right. Like if you just Dude. look at Pence, that's like a, a Lego man if he Dude. came alive. And then you have Nancy Pelosi melting and fucking Trump. Dude, you know what's being, sad? Like the fat orange fucking retard Oompa Loompa he is. We're looking at a picture right now where the only person smiling is Mike Pence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess like he's the one really pulling the strings behind the... Uh, yeah, new, he's just waiting to become president. Yeah. Yeah. I bide my so she, she rips it. Please clap. Please, you, clap. Please clap. Please clap. Please clap. Stop clapping for yourself! God damn it! Fuck! No, That's what he was doing! That. That's what he was doing! He was clapping for himself! Oh my god. I, I, whatever. Whatever. Wait, yeah, whatever. Yay whatever, me. man. I'm tremendous. Yay me. Yay me. He does that all the time, dude. Just like, yes, what a wonderful speech I just gave. It's amazing. Dude, get, get, dude, get a fucking man who looks at you like, tr like Pence is looking at Trump right now. Holy shit. <laughs> he looks like he wants to uh, <laughs> take him out behind the woodshed and play some soggy cracker, dude. Yeah, with him and Joe Biden. All right. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Look at his hair. Uh, Look at his hair. Look at dude, his hair. It, it, it's funny when I talk to people who support Trump, like they they won't fucking back down when it comes to his horrendous haircut. They they, they defend it no matter what. Even if like even if I were to Photoshop this and just like cut it out and just like make a silhouette out of it and show it to them and ask them like what's this and they would you know respond like oh it's a fat guy with a batting helmet and i show them the original image they would still just be like oh well you know oh my god good. it is a fat guy with a batting helmet oh my god you're totally fucking right dude so this is a uh, an interview following that 
<laughs> that that stunt by Nancy Pelosi, which, as we know, is going to revolutionize the American political system. Oh, totally. Well, I thought it was a terrible thing when she ripped up the speech. First of all, it's an official document. You're not allowed. It's illegal what she did. She broke the law. But I haven't, uh... I haven't Who fucking cares? It's a pile of papers. Been asked a question. It's not like anyone was going to do anything with them anyway. Other than a lot of people that viewed it, they couldn't believe that she did it. Yeah. I uh, thought it was uh, terrible. I thought Oh, sorry, I, I, just like I like how that's the first thing he brings up. Like he could have just been like, "Yeah, that was some petty fucking bullshit, wasn't it?" But no, he's like, "No, it's illegal. You can't tear up papers like that." It's like, really? Are you being a fucking little tattletale right now? That's how you're gonna go out this fucking angle. There's so many fucking angles you could take with that, and that's how you just fucking decide to do it. Do we need to do your job for you? Do I need to put on a stupid fucking wig and go out in front of the American people and answer your questions for you? Because I do a better fucking job. That's for sure. Sure, better than fucking Sarah Sorry, Sanders, too. To sorry, Look, go ahead, Jay. No, sorry, Pelosi sucks, but I mean, Trump's not much better. <laughs> no. I do a better no, job no, no. than Sarah least, Huckabee like, Sanders. Or Sarah at least, Huckabee like, Trump West is, like, or somewhat entertaining sometimes, you know? Yeah. Chambers of the country, mm -hmm. and... You know, look, I, people, I got very high marks on this speech, and I didn't know she did it. Great audio quality, dude. Yeah, thumbs up, buddy. Great fucking audio quality. I'm so glad that we get to hear our, our president and only the finest audio quality in front of a fucking wind turbine, you fucker. Jesus Christ. Why? Why, why, why is every interview in, in front of such a shitty fucking... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's crap. Because no, he's busy. Did, did you hear what he just said, though? He's like... I got very good no. marks on that speech. Oh, yeah. Like, what, what Let's is, see. They gave me an A+. Plus. My teacher gave me an A. Yeah. High marks on this speech. Oh, yeah. You know, look, I, people, I got very high marks on this speech. I got an A+. Plus. <laughs> I also got a, a smiley sticker from my teacher. I didn't know she did it until I was walking out, and some of the congressmen and women were saying, can you believe what she did? But I didn't know she did it. Well, I think there's a lot of evil on that side. They've gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, like, the, there is a lot of evil thank on that Pelosi. side. I'll give him that. Yeah, well, yeah thank Pelosi for giving him that talking point. You've gone totally crazy. It's too bad. I've gotten tremendous amounts done, more than anybody. Thanks, Nancy Pelosi, you vile fucking woman. But uh, they're not constructive people. Unlike me, I built a wall. I'm constructive. <laughs> no, he didn't. It's still unfinished, and he's almost like at the end of his term. Well, you are what you eat. <laughs> a pile of shit, or what? <laughs> yeah, in, in orange. Well, I do work with Democrats. I work with everybody, but uh, that group is, uh, you know, they say Trump derangement syndrome. They name one it. Democrat you've worked with, please. Please, please. name I one, name stuff. one, one, one. I want one. I want one fucking name. You can't give me one. You couldn't give me fucking one. Hey, the other night when she ripped up the speech, that was terrible. Was Kanye terrible? West? So disrespectful to our country. You know, you know the worst part about this is? Is he says that, you know, he says he's worked with Democrats before, but I mean, the, the Democrat that he worked with the most was Nancy Pelosi. That was the person he collaborated with yeah. the most of any Democrat. That's actually what I was about to say, but then I was like, wait, is that even true? But it no, is. you're right. That That is true. Nancy Pelosi. You fucking lying orange Cheeto fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Legal, what you did. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Hey, Chris Hayes. I'm Chris How Hayes you from Dateline NBC. Watching MSNBC. <laughs> and why don't you have a seat? On YouTube, if you want to keep up to date with the videos I don't. I'm hello, out, I'm I'm hello, hello NBC, NBC News fans. <laughs> Die of AIDS. Do you remember that? Remember that? Remember that? Oh, God, I'm so glad they stopped doing that. It's like, hey, fans, who the fuck is a fan of, like, a major news network? And then they, they, and then they refilmed it just so he didn't say fans anymore. Probably because they watched an episode of Underhaven and they realized how fucking ridiculous <laughs> it was. I do find it funny, though, that they did they specifically removed the word fans. Like, they did that on purpose. So someone called them out on saying fans. I mean, that's funny. We did. All right, well, those are all the videos we have for the show. Damn, that's that was awesome. Dope. Beautiful, Jay. The end. Um, that's that was a fun end. time. Yep. Yeah, a gay old time. <laughs> and we all we all came out of the closet too during that discussion. Yeah, we realized that we we had the most yeah, bisexual dude. podcast of all time going on there for a second. That was pretty cool. We're, 
and bisexual, uh, biracial, and bipolar. It's awesome. Oh yeah. Dude. All right. Well, hopefully yeah, the yeah. audience enjoyed it. Yeah, you probably you, not. But you, still, you, you know. yeah, you guys better have enjoyed it or else. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. Right. Uh, thanks for being on the show, Jay. Uh, Sarah's not here, but I, you know, thanks to her for being on the show. That was fun. Thank um, you, Sarah. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good night. You.